So brain drain is just the exodus or the immigration of highly skilled workers from a country or from a region. And probably your first reaction when you think about brain drain is a negative one. Oh my gosh, all these uh, smart people are leaving. Um, that's a natural one because these brains are working with other people locally, so they have skills that are complementary with the local people in the market. And also, as soon as you think about the government's finances, well, highly skilled and highly educated people generally pay more taxes than they consume in government benefits. So it's a loss to, uh, uh, loss to the public finances. And I guess third, you'd think about, you know, what do brains do? Brains innovate, brains create knowledge. And to the extent that knowledge creation is a fuel for growth in your economy, then of course, uh, ascending countries going to regret uh, uh, the loss of brains. So that's the negative side. Um, let me talk about the surprising positive side of brain drain. Uh, one possibility, and this is more something that happens in developing countries, is countries have found that when they open their exit gates to let their brains leave, as China did maybe 20 years ago, um, that created additional incentives for Chinese people to acquire more education. Because, oh my gosh, now if I get an education, maybe I can go abroad, get a good job, and maybe come back. People who go abroad, brains and others, send remittances back to the country, uh, even if, you know, just to friends and relatives. Once they get to the new country, um, they buy products that are made from home. Everyone has a home bias in terms of the goods that they like to consume. Um, there's probably benefits to the home country in terms of increased innovation. The very thing that we regretted, uh, if your brains move to another country, well, um, they're going to collaborate. They're going to continue collaborating with people who are left behind. There's going to be a flow of knowledge back and forth, both new knowledge that they produce abroad and just transmitting existing knowledge that was there and bringing it back to the home country. Uh, so there's an increased flow of knowledge between the, uh, the, co the economy that they're going to and others. These flows could also include foreign direct investment flows, uh, increased trade uh, between their new co company and the previous one. And of course, a lot of brains who drain uh, return back uh, to their country of origin, bringing with them uh, skills that they've acquired abroad and important connections that they've acquired abroad. Um, one last uh, benefit that people have cited uh, in terms of having a, a policy that lets people leave is, is that uh, this imposes some discipline on the sending country's tax authorities. If stars are mobile, if soccer stars can go anywhere they want to, or movie stars can go anywhere they want to, that's going to limit the sending country's ability to, to, raise, to impose very high taxes on the citizens. If that's one of your objectives, then having open uh, exits actually is beneficial that way as well. What can they do is a good question. Uh, certainly one thing that is perhaps obvious that policymakers, I think, should avoid is trying to prevent the brains from leaving. There are many benefits to brain circulation, and you don't want to try to erect walls, or as some people have proposed, tax your brains who have gone uh, as, a, as a way of recouping investments that you made in them. What can you do? I think what a country that's interested in growth uh, should do is try to make itself an attractive place for brains to be. And I think we will find countries are, will be competing more and more uh, to be attractive hosts for, uh, for talented workers. So what that means, uh, and importantly, is, is competing not just on salary and taxes, the you know, net, net of tax salary, but competing on the entire dimension uh, that, that brains care about. Uh, Highly educated people tend to care a lot about amenities, both natural, physical ones and cultural aspects of cities that they live in. Um, and something, and public goods, for example, quality schools and neighborhoods and so on. And something that maybe not everyone thinks about immediately, one thing 
brains really care a lot about is being near other brains. Uh, brains love learning and producing new knowledge. And the best way to do that is to be somewhere where there are other people who uh, have similar interests and skills as you that you can learn from and collaborate with. Lastly, uh, intellectual property. Brains produce knowledge and uh, you want to be in a place where the product that you produce is actually uh, you know, reasonably protected. You have property rights in what you produce. So just putting it all together, make your country an attractive place for brains to be on multiple dimensions. And that will encourage not just brains to come, but the circulation of brains, uh, which is good for, um, for all countries in the world.